20 years ago this week, the United States, along with the UK and a group of its allies, invaded Iraq under the premise that then President Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. We now know that key pieces of intelligence that were used to back the case for war by the George W. Bush administration were fabricated. What unfolded after were years of war that unraveled the political, social, and governing structures in the country. To discuss what this war has meant for Iraqis living inside and outside the country, I'm joined by Sena Morani of the University of Plymouth. She's also the head of a project called Ruptured Domesticity that looks at the memories of Iraqis during this time of war. Sena, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. Sena, for so many Iraqis, including myself, what it means to be Iraqi and our memories are made up of a patchwork of fragments that we've pieced together. For me, that means memories that I've pulled from my father who left Iraq so many years ago. So do you think that there is a collective understanding or memory for what it means to be Iraqi? I think this is a really interesting question. The fact is, yes, there is, but there isn't one because Iraq being an Iraqi is an homogeneous um, identity. Um, and with that comes multiplicity of collective um, memories. It all depends on who's remembering. It also depends on the cultural, um, political, religious um, uh, belonging, but also the geography of where people are from. And all of that really kind of solidifies this multiplicity of, of, of memories and, and making of collective memories. You headed up um, a, a multi-part project, part of which, um, and which is called Ruptured Domesticity, uh, part of which is, is archiving these memories of, of the war uh, for people, Iraqis, who were living inside and outside the country during that time. Can you talk to us a little bit about why you decided to pursue this project and, and what came of it? This is a long kind of process that I've been working with um, 15 Iraqis from the north of Iraq to the south. Um, they come from different backgrounds um, and I've kind of selectively um, worked with them to understand stories to um, also to understand what they want to share. Something that I really wanted to understand is what was happening across the country when Baghdad was getting bombarded during the 2003 invasion. I had no idea. We were in Baghdad, but I did not know what was going on in Mosul, what was going on in Basra, what was going on elsewhere. So that was one of the things that I really wanted to engage with. But when I left Iraq, the trauma was incredibly raw still. My parents were still back home in the country. Um, so I didn't engage with it. It wasn't until when I got amazingly inspired by um, the courage of the Tishreen movement that I um, decided to revisit that question, to understand how can we stitch together collective memories and experiences of people who've been through trauma to understand how they've created, negotiated places of refuge for themselves, how, they, how their mobility across Iraq happened because every single one of those people have left their house and went back to it and went again somewhere else. And some of them left the country and went back again and so on and so on. So there was a lot of movement in that in those spaces. So the archive idea came because I really wanted the world to see this. I wanted it to be um, the collective voice of Iraqis. War is traumatic for everybody involved. And when you have years, decades of war, what you end up with is generational trauma. And in that generational trauma, you have something that endures. I wonder about how that enduring trauma has impacted the way that Iraqis interact with the country, but also their memory or their understanding of what it means to be Iraqi. I think people who have gone through um, the war and have the lived experience of trauma um, and violence wouldn't have thought about a reflective kind of moment to think about what this means. 
Um, and they go by with, I mean, up, through the conversations that I've had with Iraqis from the north to the south of Iraq, they kept on coming back to this thing of we never documented what was going on to us at the time. We don't have records, especially during the 2003 invasion, when uh, mobile phones and cameras, digital cameras weren't readily, readily available for people. So there was this thing of... Um, trauma that lingers, trauma that is carried with you. And it resurfaces in very different ways. It sometimes resurfaces in PTSD, which we've seen it, you know, across the world um, uh, happening with, with people engaged in, in, in wars in Iraq and elsewhere, but also in collective creative outlet of that, where you see a burst of cultural um, uh, belongings and, and, and tendency to want to make change happen. And this is what we saw happening um, during the um, 2019 Tishreen movement. You mentioned the 2019 Tishreen movement, which was driven by young people who were calling for an end to corruption um, and, and to uh, kind of the systemic issues that they had been dealing with in the country. But they were also calling collectively for um, a homeland, um, which you referenced this need to kind of understand what home is. Uh, those those young people, those protesters were met with uh, a pretty swift retribution from, from the government. There was a tension between what was the status quo and what they had hoped to see their country uh, look like for them and, and for the future. I'd like to ask you, whether you think this concept and what the what these young people were fighting for and protesting for is something that is a possibility absolutely absolutely it is i um i have never witnessed myself and i've lived through four generations of you know uh, in 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 iraq and outside iraq watching iraq and what happened in iraq and i know f from the history we have never been mobilized at that level before as Iraqis. And I remember it touched every single one of us inside with them on those, on those squares, but also outside of Iraq. I think for people, and, and, and remember those, those the, the activists and the people who were protesting, they were ordinary people, but they were also incredibly young. This is the generation that has seen absolutely nothing other than trauma, other than invasion, other than corruption. And for them to think of a just world like that and to, and, and to dream of a homeland like this, it was an absolute inspiration. I personally struggled with what it means to be Iraqi because of time and geographic distance I feel at times so far removed from the the country and the memories. Um, as I said earlier, sometimes you feel like you're pulling at a patchwork of fragmented fragmented memories. I assume and I know from conversation that so many other people feel the same way. I wanted to ask you, as an Iraqi who has lived outside of the country as well, what does it mean to you to be Iraqi? Okay, this is um, a complex, as you know, <laughs> this is a complex question, but it's also, um, for me, it's um, an existential question given the fact that I have been in the diaspora for quite some time. Um, it changes. So um, I, I kind of remember when I first came out of Iraq, when people used to ask me the question, my answer was very different to what it is, what it is now, right now. And I think with age, things differ as well. But it, I find it in the connections to um, the beautiful music, to the wonderful food that we have, to the language that is spoken from the gut with passion, um, to the, uh, the kind of the Iraqi humor that is uh, retrieved and found and kind of emerges in your face in the darkest of times. I, I see myself 
an Iraqi right in the center of, of, of all of that. Um, so it is a tapestry. It is a, it's a, it's a weave. It's, um, uh, it's certainly a, a kind of a, 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 a patchwork of uh, cultural heritage um, and, and, and different types of belonging. Um, but I, I, I kind of feel that this is always going to be in the making. It's, it's never going to have a form or an end to its making. And, and I love that about it. But there is certainly a yearning for um, a home that I kind of, it's always going to be there and it's never going to fade for me. Sana Morani, thank you so much for having this conversation with me. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks, Yasmin, for having me. And for the PBS NewsHour, I'm Yasmin Sami Al-Amri. Thank you so much for joining us.